So let's bring in Sylvia Jablonski. She's the institutional ETF strategy, strategist at Direction, which offers a number of leveraged and inverse ETF projects, uh, products. Sylvia, uh, welcome. I want you to just sort of explain very briefly, we're gonna put up your th three of your main products, your financial bull ETF three times, gold miner bull three times, S&P bull three times. Briefly okay. explain to the viewers who aren't sure about this, how exactly does this work? How do you get the leverage to do, say, three times the S&P every day? Sure, so there are a couple of important points that delineate these products from, from other ETFs out there. So you said it in your introduction, they're daily rebalanced products. So they're meant to be at least actively monitored on a daily basis and short-term trading periods. So how do they work? The bull funds are essentially structured with swaps. So there's 200 to 250 to 280% total return swap exposure, and the rest is a basket of stocks that tracks the underlying index. The bear funds are 300% swap. So what happens very simply with this is, let, let's say you're bullish on S&P 500 tomorrow. You think it's going to go up. So you buy SPXL, it's a three beta S&P 500 ETF. S&P moves 5%, you make 15 bucks. You had $100 of exposure, $300 with the ETF itself, 5% move multiplied by three beta 15%. So here's how they work and here's how they, they trick you. For two days, if you had 5% move upward, you're up 32.25. 15% on day one, we rebalance the funds. So you're 115 yeah. to 345 exposure, right? Yeah. And where the, so two days upward trend is your friend, compounding rebalance works in your favor. If you're up five, down five, you're not zero as you would yeah. be in Apple, IBM, right. SMH, some of the stuff yeah. you talked about before, you're down two and a quarter because of that same yeah. compounding this rebalance. This is the problem I have and why I, I basically believe that leverage and inverse ETF should only be used by professionals. It's that daily reset because mm -hmm. the uninformed investor might think, okay, I'm buying three times the market, the S&P is up 2% this month, therefore I make 6%. Right. And as you've explained, that daily reset means that is not necessarily the case. And sometimes you can get some nasty surprises. That's right. That's right. So sometimes it can work in your favor. And again, this is not the way to use the product. But if you look at our tech ETF, basically, from 2008 until August of last year, it was up over 6,000%. Why? The markets were low, volatile, and trending. However, if you held our gold miner ETFs during that same period of time, you'd be down over 200% in both because the markets had some range-bound volatility in that sector. So the important thing is, to your point, tactical sophisticated investors that understand how they work and have short-term actively monitoring positions and, and mindset about their portfolio well, reconstruction. Let's, let's bring in some, our, our guests here, Todd uh, and Kim. You have run uh, advice for clients. You run ETF portfolios. Does a leverage and inverse ETF have some place in, in, in an average trader's portfolio? That's not a professional tactical trader. Is there any argument that you, could, you can make? I mean, I, I personally think for ourselves, because we're reversion to the mean fundamental investors there, and we kind of buy and hold. Um, so those products to me have been built by traders for traders, and it's been very effective. That's one plus percent of the AUMs in the ETF complex, and it's seven plus percent of the daily trading volume. So kudos for that, for being able to construct a product that traders can use. But I think, Bob, to your point, if you're looking for the average investor um, it's, it's really, remember, you have two decisions to make. When you buy something, then you sell it. You then, after you sell it, now you have to reinvest that money. So it gets very, very difficult. You get a compounding yeah. of trying to reinvest the money. Again. But I find that we, we, you'll see within sectors and industries, there will be a big yeah. divergence. You showed earlier about the big winners. Many of those were underperformers in the before. So if you got that trend right, you can spot it. You can use the fundamentals to be able to move that. The research that we do at CFRA is geared more for a wealth management audience. Yeah. This is a little bit more trading that's a little bit different so, than that. Sylvia, one of the yeah. problems I have with leveraging in first ETFs is 2% of the volume, but it generates 90% of the hate mail amongst what I call the <laughs> ETF haters, the, those managers out there who want to find some reason to hate the ETF uh, universe. What do, you, what do you say to people who, who say that these leverage in ETF uh, leverage and inverse ETFs could represent a systemic risk to the market in some way, that there's some unknown way it could blow up. We had some problem with the VIX products in February. Yeah, so at Direction, we don't have the VIX products. You know, for that reason, we were sort of uncomfortable with the underlying uh, derivatives that we had to use and the stop outs and things like that. With our ETFs, you know, you're using swaps. There are basically 10 ways to hedge our products. You have options, futures, baskets, other ETFs. Um, so, so there are a lot of you know liquid underlines used to hedge the products. We're such a small percentage of the daily 
flow. Yeah. It's, it's a drop in the bucket. And also you have bull funds and bear funds. You have a net asset position. So people don't sort of realize that the exposure is not as big as it seems. And for the haters of ETFs, a lot of it I think is misunderstanding. We have leverage for the long-term holder. You know, Kim could be somebody who might look at a 1.25 beta ETF, right? Yeah. But he's probably not going to hold a 3X product. However, around earnings, he might want to hedge financials. He might want to hedge uh, well, healthcare be for CVS. So let me just correct. It's really, you're 2% of the assets under management, not necessarily yes. the volume, but you generate 90% of the hate mail. I, that's my point. Right. So could you give us some piece of advice? Under what circumstances would an average investor want to use them if they understood them? Could you give us an, an example? Sure. So great example is around earnings. So Boeing, you know, Boeing crushed earnings. You had AMD come out and crush earnings. You guys were talking about semiconductors mm -hmm. earlier. If you have a conviction that the direction of the semiconductor index will be upward and volatility will be low for the next couple of days, you might put on a 3x position, keep an eye on it, and when you generate some alpha in the short term, you know, offload your position. If you're looking, let's say, you know, um, Fed comes out and starts raising rates, well, a good way to hedge portfolio duration is to use an inverse treasury ETF. Um, so, so much of it is your view so you, on the markets the and volatility. Is, you need to have a viewpoint on and a short-term direction. A viewpoint on uh, the market and a viewpoint on the volatility. Exactly, exactly. And if you're a long-term buy and hold investor, you don't look at your portfolio, don't touch it. Look at 1.25, look at 150.50s that have a 100% market exposure. Use leverage for the long-term, trade leverage for the short-term with the three beta products. Very educational. Thank you, Sylvia. You're that really welcome. helped educate our viewers and educate us a little bit more about joining uh, the whole leverage and inverse ETF business. Thank you, Sylvia, for joining us.